welcome. Welcome whoever you are, however you are feeling today. Whatever feelings of joy or sadness that you bring on this morning, you're all welcome. And welcome wherever you are and however you are joining us, whether you're here in church, on li watching live online, or watching a recording later, well, I know that there is one person who will be reading this service. You're welcome. For however we join in, each one of us is part of our community, contributing by being with us in spirit and all equally valued. The theme this month is play and today's service will be continuing with that theme. It's entitled so much more than child's play and we'll be looking at how important play is in many forms for our well-being throughout our lives and of course i'd written most of this service before the events of thursday evening and i think the whole community of plymouth is very shocked by what's happened and we will be remembering those people in our prayers shortly and we begin by lighting our chalice flame as a symbol of our free religious faith. And if you're watching at home and have a candle, you may like to light it now. We light this chalice in fellowship, in love and compassion drawing from it inspiration and hope and strength for the days ahead. Our opening words are by Friedrich Nietzsche, who lived over a hundred years ago, and he writes, The Eternal Child. We think that play and fairy tales belong to childhood. How short-sighted that is as though we would want at any time of life to live without play and fairy tales. We give these things other names to be sure and feel differently about them. But precisely, this is the evidence that they are the same things for the child too regards play as his work and fairy tales as his truth. The brevity of life ought to preserve us from a pedantic division of life into different stages, as though each brought something new. And a poet ought for once to present a man of 200, one that is, who really does live without play and fairy tales. It's time for our first hymn, which is number nine in the green book. I think most of you will be able to see on the screen and this this pays tribute to our lives and how valuable they are to us all so the hymn number nine a little sun a little rain and we are now allowed to sing in church as well
<clears throat> Let us pause and hold in our thoughts and prayers all those of our own church community and in the wider world who are experiencing difficult, sad or worrying times, whether through illness, accident or bereavement, human actions or natural causes. There are countless people around the world in diff diff dangerous and desperate situations today especially in Afghanistan and Haiti, where there's been an earthquake. And we remember them in prayer. But today, we especially hold in our thoughts and prayers those within our own city who lost their lives, were injured, or have been left bereft by the senseless violence of Thursday night. Let us give thanks for all those in the police and emergency services who responded so swiftly, running towards a situation to provide help when the natural reaction would be to flee to safety. Let us give thanks for the ways in which the local and citywide communities are pulling together to give help and support to the bereaved and those affected by being so close to this sad event. May the spirit of compassion and kindness prevail to heal the emotional wounds that we're all feeling at this time. I will now light a candle for these people and invite you to join in a short silence. We remember these people, their lives cut short so tragically and unexpectedly. May they rest in peace and their memories remain green forever. Amen. And a short pause for our own silent prayers now. Amen. Let us turn now to a story. It's a story of hope and reconciliation inspired by play. And this is Danielle's story. For more than 20 years, an organisation called Right to Play has worked in some of the most difficult and dangerous places on earth to help children through play. It helps to keep children in school and out of work. It teaches them how to prevent life-threatening diseases like malaria, HIV. It keeps them safe from exploitation and abuse. It gives girls the power to say no to unwanted sex and to make healthy decisions about their bodies and their future. Play saves lives. And this is Danielle's story, one of the children who was saved literally by play. It's a hot day in Burundi 
and Danielle stands in the middle of a crowd of children who've just played a game of football. Children from both the major ethnicities in Burundi, Hutus and Tutsis, make up the teams. After game discussions are important for the children to talk about loss, reconciliation and peace. In this safe and welcoming space, Danielle skillfully helps them open up to share how they feel. She understands their pain because she shares it. Danielle was just eight when the Burundi Civil War broke out in 1993. When it ended 12 years later, 300,000 Burundians had died in the inter-ethnic violence and half a million people had fled to neighbouring countries. Danielle lost her parents, three brothers and an older sister to that violence. In the year 2000, now a 15 year old and still grieving those losses, she became a refugee living with a widowed female cousin in one of the many sprawling refugee camps in Western Tanzania. Life in the camps was very hard. Food was rationed and the horrible combination of stress, poverty and grief at away at Danielle. She spent several years in the camp, becoming ever more hopeless and depressed with a constant ache in her stomach, both from the physical hunger and tension between sadness and anger. The refugee camps were filled with people from both ethnicities each blaming the other for starting the civil war. They thought they taught the children to hate the other side and see them as criminals. And the militia would sweep through the camps, recruiting more than 14,000 child soldiers. In 2001, Right to Play began working in the refugee camps, initially providing health education and later a broader programme to promote social inclusion, help communication, and for youth advocates to work for peace. Danielle joined that programme the following year. With many other refugee children, she attended the game sessions. Playing games like football and volleyball helped to take the children's minds off their sad feelings, their boredom, their anger. When Daniel played, she could focus on the game and leave behind her bad feelings and her anxiety over the future. She remembers, playing games helped me to cope with my situation and find strength despite my despair. She connected well with the coaches and was chosen for leadership training to teach the youth volleyball in the camps. As part of her training, Danielle learned how to use the play to broach discussions about the difficult issues, helping the children to open up and express themselves. She encouraged them to talk about their experiences in the Civil War, about loss and grief, but also about peace and mutual respect and the possibility of coexistence. The hatred that she'd once felt had drained away, replaced by compassion. She wanted to play a part in dissolving the hatred that had inflamed the war. And for the first time in her life, she felt empowered enough to enable positive changes in the lives of others. Some years later, after the fighting ended, Danielle returned home. Like many returning refugees, she was nervous. Leaving the camp meant leaving her support network, the cousin who'd raised her, and the right to play coaches who had become good friends. After just a short time back home, she realised how tense the situation still was in Burundi. Despite a formal peace treaty to end the war, underlying anger, loss, and hatred for the other side were still there. Thousands of returning Burundians, including former child soldiers, 
were joined by refugees fleeing violence in the neighbouring Democratic Republic of Congo. They struggled to integrate into a fragile society because although Danielle had changed, many others had not. Danielle and the coaches she had trained worked hard using play and sport to promote peace, to help the newcomers mix with their host community. The worst of the violence has passed, but there are still sporadic outbreaks and hundreds of thousands of refugees haven't yet come home from the neighbouring countries. For Danielle, recent crises reinforce the importance and urgency of her work. She knows that they still face great challenges, but says, children must have a future that is free of violence, where they are respected and can learn respect for one another. Only then can we have peace. And her role of enabling the children to do this through play will be important for years to come. And now we come to a poem about play and Cliff is going to read it for us. Friends, it has been a terrible week for news. Turkey, Haiti, Afghanistan, and our own beautiful city of Plymouth. But I'm glad that Sheila asked me to read this poem because it lightens the heart. And it's called The Gift of Play, written by Edgar Albert Guest was born in Britain, but spent most of his time in the USA. The Gift of Play. Some have the gift of song, and some possess the gift of silver speech. Some have the gift of leadership, and some the ways of life can teach, and fame and wealth reward their friends. In jewels are their splendors told, but in good time their favorites grow very faint and gray and old. But there are men who laugh, laugh at time and hold the cruel years at bay. They romp through life forever young because they have the gift of play. They walk with children hand in hand through daisy fields and orchards fair nor all the dignity of age and power and pomp can follow there. They've kept the magic charm of youth beneath the wrinkled robe of time, and there's no friendly apple tree that they have grown too old to climb. They have not let the boyhood die. They can be children for the day. They have not bartered for success and all its praise, the gift of play. They think and talk in terms of youth with love of light at their eyes and bright. No rheumatism of the soul has robbed them of the world's delight. They laugh and sing their way along and join in pleasures when they can. And in their glad philosophy, they hold that mirth becomes a man. They spend no strength in growing old. What if their brows be crowned with grey? The spirits in their breasts are young. They still possess the gift of play. The richest men of life are not the ones who rise to wealth and fame. Not the great sages, old and wise and grave of face and bent of frame. But the glad spirits, tall and straight, who spite of time and all its care, have kept the power to laugh and sing in youth's fellowship to share. They that can walk with boys and be a boy among them, blithe and gay, defy the withering blasts of age because they have the gift of play. Thank you.
Thank you, Cliff. Beautifully read. Thank you. And we turn now to a time of reflection. I'm going to read just a short piece and that will be followed by about a minute and a half of silence and then a short piece of music. And these are words adapted from those of Tess Ward who's an Anglican priest and a spiritual director and a hospital chaplain. Spirit of life, may the song of life beat through my veins, that I may live this day with whatever, whatever sadness or gladness it brings. Beat through my feet, that I may dance the dance that only I can dance. Beat through my being, that I might be in time to your movement. Beat through my heart, that I might bring harmony when I am with another. Beat with compassion, if I fall out of step with all around me.
makes each job like child's play. This was the pleasing legend accompanying the picture of a girl of about 10, the same age as I was, wielding a paintbrush. It was on the tin my mother held. Mum was going to paint the mantelpiece in the prefab where we lived when I was a child growing up. I can remember pestering her to let me help. And in what was for her an unusual moment of weakness, my mother agreed. How could she do otherwise when it said on the tin how easy it would be? <laughs> it doesn't always do what it says on the tin, you know. If this was child's play, it was meant for a much older child, neither I or the girl on the tin. I made a terrible mess. Most of the nut brown paint went anywhere except on the mantelpiece. And my career as a decorator was over. Isn't it strange how memories from long ago are brought to mind by a word or turn of phrase? Child's play. I wondered what the Bible says about play. And so I pulled out the huge concordance, which I think used to belong to Richard, and looked up the word play in it. The few references actually using the word play are all from the Old Testament. And only a very few use the word play in the context of going out to play. In Exodus, I read that while the people waited for Moses to come down from the mountain with what would become known as the Ten Commandments, Aaron tempted the children of Israel to make false gods and a golden idol, after which we read in the King James Version, they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings and the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. Other versions use the word revelry instead. I don't think it was very good PR for play. And in Job there is a reference to the beasts of the field feeling secure enough and safe from predation to engage in play. I'm not quite sure what play the beasts of the field did, but that's what it says. And in Zechariah, there's a reference to the streets being filled with boys and girls playing there. This refers to what God had already promised to the people if they were faithful to his covenant. And that seems to be about it. The reigning references are either obviously about playing musical instruments or to behaving in a certain way, playing a certain role. I couldn't find any mention of the word play itself in the New Testament, although there are references to pleasure and enjoyment and references to child or children run like a golden thread throughout all of the Bible in different contexts. If you say the word play, many people automatically think of children playing, doing something easy, time wasting even, when they aren't in school, getting on with a much more important activity of learning. It's child's play, we say, a little dismissively, rather like the caption on the paint tin. But as my mum and I discovered, child's play may not be quite so easy, and it can teach us important lessons, whatever our age. Lots of young animals play. It's how they learn and equip themselves with the important skills which will keep them alive as independent adults. If you've ever watched a litter of kittens at play, you'll see how they chase their tails and pat one another, mewing excitedly. They seem to be having fun and enjoying themselves. They're really learning. They're learning through their play fights, 
how to protect themselves, how to develop their hunting skills. When they become young adults, the strongest will become the alpha cat and win the right to the best food and the fittest mates. I can remember in that same prefab when I was a little girl, we took in a stray cat and it presented us with kittens. And as those kittens grew, there was one cat, the strongest of the lot, and I can remember him with one paw in the food dish, pushing all the others away. <laughs> of course, as they grow, and, and by the time there might be an alpha cat, the human owners have usually separated them and sent them to different homes. Even a lone adult cat continues to hone its skills. It plays with string, it chases its tail, and often to the dismay of its human, catches small prey like mice or birds, which it proudly presents to its alpha cat, the human. Young primates, the higher monkeys and apes, and humans, have much longer childhoods than cats or dogs, and their playtime and a strong sense of curiosity about the world last a few years. As they become adults, they seem to lose this to some extent for the sake of keeping the peace in the troop. But we humans, we keep a sense of play throughout our lives. Play in its broadest sense. It includes an immense variety of activities, each giving pleasure and enjoyment to the person or people involved and by lookers as well. And each is creative in its own way. Those of you that were here last week may remember that in her service, Kate referred to creativity being a spiritual experience, with creativity leading into spirituality and spirituality leading to creativity. So play in its many forms is essential to our well-being, physical, mental and spiritual. We heard in Danielle's story how the children, in even the worst of circumstances, benefit enormously from being given the chance to play games. And it literally saved her life. It enabled her to unlearn destructive negative emotions. And it gave her the skills to save other children like her. And in Daniel's case, it began with playing a game thanks to that organisation called Right to Play. Playing, of course, also means making music with its unique power to cheer, to soothe, to inspire, bridging class, gender and cultural divides. No matter who you are or where you come from, some form of music will unite you with other people. And there are many forms of music, of course. There's a foundation called Play for Change, and it's very similar to Right to Play. It's created to inspire and connect the world through music, especially in South America, Nepal, Thailand, and many of the African countries. As well as supporting free musical education for children, it also works with partner organisations to help meet basic needs in these communities, which are home to some of the world's most economically vulnerable children. The work includes providing primary education, humanitarian aid such as clean water, solar power, food, medicine, clothes, books and school supplies, and tools and trainings to support microenterprise. And to date, the lives of more than 40,000 people have been improved through musical education and development. So what is offered is so much more than child's play, and it's life-saving. And we will hear some of the children singing at the very end of our service, so for, the use, for you watching online, do try and stay and listen to it. Play in its diverse forms 
brings hope and vitality to everyone, whatever our calendar age, if we let it. Sages down the ages have commented and encourage us all to play. The ancient Greeks knew this. The philosopher Heraclitus said, man is most nearly himself when he achieves the seriousness of a child at play. While Plato observed that you can discover more about a person in an hour of play than in a year of conversation. He also had very modern views on education advising, do not keep children to their studies by compulsion, but by play. And there's a modern professor in psychiatry, Kay Jamieson, who would agree. She states very clearly that children need the freedom and time to play. Play is not a luxury. Play is a necessity. The 19th century one-time Unitarian, Ralph Waldo Emerson, didn't mention age when he acknowledged that is a happy talent to know how to play. And George Bernard Shaw Riley observed, we don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. And I'm thinking here of the poem which Cliff read for us about the gift of play. There are countless more ways to play by ourselves or in company. Our minds delight in board games and word games, in learning new languages, in debating and writing and reading. You can lose yourself in a good book or play. There's a giveaway. <laughs> Losing yourself in the story, becoming in your mind's eye one of the characters, which is a form of play. Our bodies, depending on their condition, delight in sedate strolls or running or swimming or more physically active sports. Mind and body play together in the kitchen to create nourishing dishes, while our spirits delight in creating and enjoying music, art, stitch work, poetry and in acts of worship. Anybody who's put a service together will know what I mean. We also enjoy the social aspect of play. Meeting up for board games, quiz games, exercise groups, book groups, choir and orchestra practices. When this wasn't possible during the lockdowns, the need was so strong that lots of online groups set up to continue many of those activities by the wizardry of technology and meeting people so far away they might never have met in person. So, finally, play and playfulness is essential to our well-being. Play lifts us out of the mundane and ordinary to give respite from the troubles of our lives. How different might our world be if all human beings were able to engage in happy, wholesome, kindly play. How many accidents and tragedies might be avoided if everyone had the chance of just an hour a day to escape their worries and anger and sadness. To let down the boundaries and overcome the difficulties and resistances between the self and other people. Rather than hurl angry words, or worse, at a neighbour, share a joke with them. It's important, not only as children, but throughout our lives. And as we heard in our opening words, written nearly a century and a half ago, would we want, at any time of life, to live without play and fairy tales? For whatever we call them, surely there's so much more than just child's play. They are life enhancing and life saving. Blessed be.
Amen. I invite you to join in our second hymn, which if you have a book to hand is in the purple book and it's number 68. And fortuitously, I actually chose this quite early last week. Um, but if you read through the words, we are here for all occasions. Um, and I hope that you would agree that we're here for the sad occasions, but we're also here for the happy occasions too. So let's sing hymn number 68. I dream of a church that joins in with God's laughing. son we come to our closing words and for people online if you would like to stay and join in the chat rooms afterwards just stay online and and if you're not able to do that um quietly leave please during the closing music so we come to our closing words from laurel Hill bellamy and she says if here you have found freedom Take it with you into the world. If you have found comfort, go and share it with others. If you have dreamed dreams, help one another that they may come true. If you have known love, give some back to a bruised and hurting world. Go in love and peace. Amen.